Hey everyone, just want to make a quick introduction video for the free version of the RBC add-on, which will help you create uh, physics-based car rigs. The pro version will offer a lot more tools and features along with some more customizable rigs and different kinds of rigs you can use. You can find both versions on Gumroad and Blender Market. So let's just go ahead and get started by installing the add-on. So we go to edit, preferences, install. Find your download. It's going to be under the RBC add-on free. Go ahead and enable that. And then I'm going to use the Sketchfab add-on just to import a vehicle. I'm going to use this Jeep. Okay, once you have the model imported, we're just going to want to clean up the model. Basically, the idea is to separate your vehicle into five different parts, which will be the four wheels and then the body. So basically, I just find the body and then I'll just select all the objects and Control J to join them together. And most of these Sketchfab models will be parented to a empty or something. So just select the mesh and Alt-P, clear and keep transformation, and that'll unparent it from the empty and keep the position. Next up is the tire. So I'll just select all the tires, Control-J, from all in one, and then Alt-P, clear and keep transformation. So now I have two objects, and I can go ahead and delete these uh, empty objects. And so for each one of these tires, you want these to be a separate object. So I'll go ahead and separate these by entering edit mode. I'll go ahead and hide this. I'll go in wireframe mode and I'll box select each tire, P, separate by selection, and then just do this for all four tires. Now it's going to be very important that each one of these tires and your body object are completely separated. And I'll show you in a minute why you want these to be separated properly. I'll go ahead and add this to a collection. Once you have your model separated, we'll go ahead and orientate it. So you want it to be facing towards the front view. So if you press one on your number pad, you'll be brought to the front view. You can also find it here in your navigation panel or up here through viewport. You just want to make sure that you're in the front view and your vehicle is facing towards you. And this is very important to have your vehicle oriented. That way the wheels are properly set up. So once we have that, we can click on our RBC panel. So in the free version, we only have the car option. So I just click add rig and that'll create a scene for you along with our new collection folder, along with all the rigging objects you need. But don't move the RBC add-on collection out of the scene collection or the rig collection out of the RBC add-on collection because you may run into problems doing that. So once you add your rig in, you'll notice we have a few more panels pop up. One is the collection panel. This will be uh, more versatile with the pro version. The important panel is going to be your, your rig panel. And so this is where you'll set up, tune, and control your vehicle. So let's go ahead and set up our vehicle. It's very simple to do. Just click your body here and I'll just click the button. So the setup's oriented as if you were driving the car. So this is your front left tire, this is your front right tire. It's your back left tire, and this is your back right tire. With the tire selected, so you click it, you can see that our uh, rigid body object will adapt to whatever object we have selected. So this is important to know because if your tires are off just by a little bit, your rig might be off. You might have some issues with that. So just make sure that your wheels are properly aligned. And also another thing to note is, is even if you have like a vertice off, so when you're cleaning up your mesh, even if you have like a stray vertice off here, and you go ahead and select it, your wheel will adapt to whatever mesh you have. So as you can see, our wheel is messed up and that's just caused by a single vertice being out of place. So just double check everything. If you're having issues, make sure that your vehicle objects are properly separated. So once we have everything set up, we'll have access to the generate rig button and we'll go ahead and generate this rig. So now that our vehicle's set up, we can now tune it to our liking. And this is the tuning panel here. So you got the wheels, suspension, physics, and Again, you'll be limited with these options. I like to shift collect to have the tuning controls just to test out the controls and tuning at the same time. So if we just steer real quick, I'll turn the brakes on. So the turn radius is the degree at which the wheel will rotate. So if we change that to 15 degrees, we'll see that the wheels can only turn 15 degrees and then you can just change this to whatever. To see a change, you may have to reset to the beginning of the timeline for this feature. If you're increasing it, it'll go all the way up to 90 if you want, but I find 35 to 45 uh, sufficient enough. Next will be suspension. So the zero limit will be no suspension at all. The spring stiffness is going to be how stiff your suspension is, you know, 
lower suspension will be loose suspension. The higher suspensions will be more bouncy. And then spring dampening is basically how bouncy that a spring is. So if we have zero, it'll be super bouncy as zero will continually bounce. You're going to want to keep that above zero to have it settle and play around with these levels. I'm finding that the default settings are working good for this particular model. Next we have physics. So we have the option to play around with our tire friction. So I'll just show you that tire friction is the friction of your tires. So if we decrease that, your tires will have zero friction. So this would be fun if you were playing on ice or something, or if your uh, wheels are spinning out and you just need more traction, you can increase this. So I find these are your most essential tweaking. Of course, with the pro version, you'll have a lot more options to play around with to properly tune your vehicle. Moving on to the controls and the pro versions, you'll have the ability to use a controller and keyboard a further free version. We just have drivers. The drivers are basically your values, your drive settings. You can also keyframe or add drivers so you can create your own driving system if you wanted to. So positive value drives forwards and negative value will drive backwards. And then you're steering a negative value will turn left and positive value will turn right. Again, if you don't have your vehicle oriented properly, the drive motor settings will be backwards. So if you're having that issue, you'll have to reset your rig and then set it up properly. And then these buttons over here, let's just, we have the reset button or the disable button. And then we have our brake function here. So, so we can use that. And each one of these values are keyframeable. So you can actually uh, keyframe them in the timeline here. Uh, down here, we have the motor torque and brake strength. So if you want more power, or I guess more torque, uh, you can increase this value. And to demonstrate the brake strength, I'll insert a keyframe, right click, insert keyframe, or use the shortcut I. So I'll go have that a neutral, and then the next frame, I'll go ahead and enable the brake, and then insert a keyframe. So it'll pop off, and then the brake will be enabled right here. So if you wanted to have, let's say, an emergency brake, you can go ahead and increase this value. You can see that the braking is now more immediate. All right, coming back up here to collection. So we have a couple features here in the collection panel. We have the eye, which is going to hide your rig. So this is handy if you are using cycles. In the viewport, you'll notice that your model is surrounded by our rigid body mesh. So you can go ahead and disable that to see your model when you're working in cycles viewport. Another feature we have is the select feature. So this will only work if your vehicle isn't hidden. But basically, this is to organize. If you have lots of rigs, uh, this will help you if you want to quickly find your rig. It'll select the viewport to the rig. Next handy feature we have is the renaming. So you're going to want to enable this and then we can go ahead and change the name to pickup. And then you'll find all the objects in your rig collection and your rig collection are changed to whatever name you choose. You're only going to want to delete the rig through this button. You don't want to delete the collection objects or any of this. You're going to want to delete the rig with this button here to avoid issues with the atom. Down here we have the animation panel. So this is going to be where you record your cache and this will be easier to show if you have a rigid body object selected. So you can see this cache bar down here at the bottom. So basically you want to record that cache. So we have two options here. We either have record cache, which will record it from the beginning. So if we go ahead and play and we drive our vehicle around and you can tell it's recorded because it's now changed to a darker color. You go ahead and delete that cache or if we drive around you can see that our our timeline isn't baked so we can bake the current cache which will be this yellow cache line here so we can bake, bake it to our current frame timeline and then we can still continue so let's say go ahead and enable this back and we can continue to record and save our cache until the end of the timeline so this just makes you know recording and making vehicle animations quick and easy with your caching system here and of course we have our play pause and reset button next up i'll show you the collisions panel here so i'll go ahead and import this trash can so we have an object to play with so an active collision will be any object that you want to move and interact with your vehicle go ahead and select that passive collision will be like the ground or anything that your vehicle will interact with that won't move and then you can clear the collision to disable it but once you have your active or passive collision enabled, you'll have the, the rigid body settings. So you can have options down here. This will also work if you have multiple objects selected. So you can go and select all of these and click which collision you want, and then it will enable it for whatever selected. And then another important thing to understand about rigid body physics is the collision type. So down here are the collision shape. 
So by default, it's going to be set to the convex hole. Typically, you know, you can use whatever shape you want, but typically you're going to want to use convex hole or mesh. The higher the mesh poly count is, the slower that your simulation can be. And that's best demonstrated through a passive collision. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a dirt road for this car to drive on. Okay, so I have this dirt plane set up. So in order for our vehicle to interact with it, let's go ahead and make this a passive collision. And you'll notice right off the bat that it doesn't look right. I mean, this is because each object by default will have the convex hole. So I made this little button down here to demonstrate what that looks like. Have your object selected, enable the convex hole, and this will show you actually the, the actual shape of your collision. So right now you can see that it's, uh, it's not actually our mesh that it's interacting with. So for certain collision objects, you will want to use a mesh. To note something with the mesh is that if it's a high poly count, for example, even with this amount of geometry, Blender has a trouble with performance when it comes to mesh collisions. As you can see, it's very, very, very slow. And if it's high enough, you will even run into crashes, which is unfortunate. So basically it's only a performance hit on our real time frame rate. Once we have the cache baked, our performance is back to normal. So really it's only when it's uh, calculating it live. So I'd just be very careful with that. So I'm going to have to reduce the geometry a little bit and our wheels aren't coming into contact quite as well, but our performance is higher. What I like to do is basically bake and then either raise this up so that our wheels are in contact with the ground or overlap this with a higher model mesh. But yeah, I think that pretty much covers it covers it all if you have any questions you can go ahead and join our discord and i'll answer any questions you guys have again this is kind of just like a taster for the uh, pro version there's lots more features lots more options you have i just want to say thank you for checking it out i hope you guys like it let me know what you think about it and if you like it go ahead and try out the pro version so thank you thanks for watching and uh have a good one